the truth is very important. And for me, a lot of years of my life growing up, I lied a lot because didn't have a lot of friends, felt socially just all kind of awkward. I was hiding all kind of stuff. So you do whatever you can to create another human being that's acceptable, that you think is acceptable in society. And when I did that, all that came out was a bunch of lies, a bunch of filth, a bunch of nothing. I come from hell. I come from hell. And a lot of it I created, not just society. Yeah, society helped me out, but I created a lot of the hell that I had to go through. I made this picture out to be a lot worse than what it was. It was bad, but I made it out to be, you know, insurmountable. The truth, it does set you free mentally, and it gives you a starting point. You have to have the truth to have a starting point. If I'm lying to you about who I am, or I'm lying to you about whatever, there's no starting point. There's a false reality. You have to create the real reality. So that's what I call my accountability mirror in my book. That's the real reality. Where the fuck am I gonna start from? So for me, I was lying to this, lying about that. So I had no starting point. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. All right, I'm not real smart. I have no courage. I have no self-esteem. I have no nothing, nothing. That's my starting point. Now we can move from there. But if I tell myself I'm strong, I have courage, I'm smart, and all these are lies, you continuously push that starting point backwards. So that starting point is the truth. The no fucking bullshit truth that only you can tell yourself. Especially nowadays in this society, we like to surround ourselves. It makes us feel so good. Those people who say, it's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. It isn't okay, man. And I get it. Society's changing. And we love to feel wanted and loved. Trust me. That's all important. But you have to have the truth from people. Hey, you're not working your butt off hard enough. You're not trying hard enough. We all think we're trying hard. But what are you gauging that off of? When I was 297 pounds and I was fat as hell trying to be a Navy SEAL, the scariest thing in the world to me, even to this day, was that that could have been the rest of my life. I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. I thought then 297 pound, working for Ecolab, spraying for cockroaches, making $1,000 a month. I thought that was me at my 100% potential. Come to find out, a few years later, I wasn't anywhere near that. 106 pounds less, graduated Navy SEAL training, went on to do all these other things. Looking back on that, that was me trying hard. That's why people gotta understand, what is in us, we have no idea until we start trying hard. And I mean really trying hard, where you're obsessed with, hey, this is my new norm. My new norm is that, wow, this isn't always fun. It's not always meant to be fun. We all have two people. We all have two people. We have the easy voice, which is that 20% telling yourself that you're, I'm easy at 90% of my full potential, maybe 100% at that 20%. That's that voice that we all love. That's that very comfortable voice that, that's that mommy holding you saying, it's gonna be okay. Doesn't care how good you are, just loves you just loves you no matter how messed up you are in life. That's where you wanna be at. So that's that one voice. This other voice that we walk very far away from is a voice saying, hey man, you ain't doing shit. So we try to get this voice out of our head completely. And we live over here in this land. So what you have to do first is turn up this voice over here. The voice saying things to you that aren't nice. You know what, man, dude, you're not, you're not doing shit. And it's not putting yourself down. People take this the wrong way in this new society. I'm not saying to put yourself down. I'm saying listen to the truth. And the truth isn't in the 20%. The truth is in this other part of your brain saying, look man, you're wasting a bunch of percentage here. We have 80 more percent that we're not tapping into because in this other 80% is suffering Pain, failure, 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 self-doubt, 
darkness and then a whole bunch of light. But to get to this light, you got to go through all of this shit. So a lot of us know that. We know I can get over here, but over here, man, this is much better because I got to go through this journey that is not fun. From 20 to 100%, this shit in between is not fun. So we decide to live over here. So everybody goes, how do you do that? You know exactly how to do that. You know exactly. It's, it's not a magic trick. It's all back down to a very primitive mindset of we just have to do. It's like breathing. That's how you have to live your life. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says, no, you just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you got to break yourself off, the amount of mental pain of how many times you're going to have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. There's going to be more times you do something that, that you don't want to do than you are going to want to do it. And that's, that, that's your new norm. That's your new norm. So then it's like breathing. And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't want to live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. So if you really want it, you realize what trying is and what trying is not. I'm a natural born fat guy. I gained 125 pounds. I was lazy. That's who I am. I'm a guy that likes to sit back, watch TV and eat pizza. All I crave is that mama voice. Please love David. Love David. That voice got me to 297 pounds. When I got in the military and I started gaining this weight a lot, my standard breakfast was eight cinnamon rolls. You know, like basically, um, I think six to eight scrambled eggs. You know, half a pound of bacon, fruity pebbles, Lucky Charms, whatever it may be. That was my standard breakfast. It was food and also being comfortable. Whatever I wanted, I did. And that's where I started seeing myself get further and further away from my true self. And your true self is found, honestly, in that very uncomfortable zone. I had this haunting voice in the back of my head. We, a lot of us have it. We just ignore it. And it was there for years. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. But I was afraid of the work because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be in the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was going to be something that I didn't want to even, even attack. So I was just putting it off. It haunted me. The voice in my head said, you know what, man? You're going to die never even trying to reach your full potential. And how's that going to feel? I visualize a lot. So basically, what I started doing was when I was 297, I thought about, my God, man, like this could be my life. And I thought, okay, what, what does heaven look like? I don't know. No one does, I imagine. So I was like, okay, I imagine that there's a big long line and you got judgment. And you're God. Let's say you're God and I'm just David Goggins. Big long line and you're talking to Jane Doe. The next person in line is David Goggins. And so I come up, I sit down now, you're talking to me. David, congratulations, you made it to heaven. How you feel? And right now I'm 300 pound man. Equal lab guy, I'm 71 years old. This is what I'm thinking at 24 years old, okay? I'm dead, I'm in heaven, you're God. You pull the paper down and says David Goggins. I'm reading it. And I'm looking at it, and it has my name, but on this paper, it says everything about you. Everything, because God knows all. And I'm looking at it, and I'm seeing 185 pounds, Navy SEAL, changed people's lives, all these amazing things. Public speaker, blah, 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 motivational, all the best-selling book. I look at God, I say, God, you, the name is right, but what's on here is not me. He goes, it should have been you. This was the life that you were supposed to live. But you didn't try. So this is the life that you have. So what I think to myself is, are you in heaven? 
Am I talking to God or am I talking to the devil? Because I'm in hell now to see that that was supposed to be my life. But because I didn't try hard enough, because I didn't put forth every single ounce of pressure in my body into being better. They ended up being a 300 pound guy that made $1,000 a month and I was fine there. That was okay. So that's how my mind works. So when I was 297 and I was all fat and out of shape and I couldn't run a quarter mile and I was drinking milkshakes and eating boxes of donuts, I visualized, man, how would it feel? So after I watched that show on Discovery Channel, there was 22 guys that graduated. I watched this segment on TV about these guys going through Navy SEAL training. And I couldn't even, I, I wasn't a great swimmer. I was afraid of the water, all this crap, man. And um, I saw these guys just quitting. But at the very end, it says 22 guys, this commanding officer's up there and he gives this great speech. So I started visualizing me being the 23rd guy in these dress whites, sitting there with these guys, graduating this Navy SEAL training. I was like, God. So I put myself there. I was like, man, that's, that's an amazing feeling. I put myself there at 297, not even able to do anything that these great men were doing. So I said, wow, man, if I could just feel like them, I wanted to win. Not like beat somebody else. It wasn't about that. I just wanted to go the distance. Everything in my life, when something got hard, I quit. If it was reading, that's why, you know, I wasn't great at reading. I wasn't great at writing, so I just quit. I couldn't catch on as fast as you. I had to work harder than you, so I quit. I wasn't great at things, so I quit. You know, I'm, I'm not good at this. Like, man, if I could just go that distance, that extra mile, to just go, just, just to finish. I want to finish. I want to feel victory. And victory for me wasn't winning, it was just finishing. So I said, you know what? If I could feel like these guys feel, it would change my life. But what I realized, the best feeling I had was when I was by myself trying to lose this weight. I had to lose it in literally less than three months. 106 pounds in less than three months. And I started feeling victory just by putting myself in the battle. It wasn't about going to Navy SEAL training. It wasn't about being the 23rd guy in that chair. I started realizing, man, just by going to war with myself every day and putting these challenges and these goals and these obstacles, these insurmountable obstacles, the more I did this, the more I gained confidence. And then the more I gained confidence, the more I realized, fuck these Navy SEALs, man. These guys can't do what I'm doing right now. I had no coach, had no trainer, had no money. I didn't know how to lose weight. I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I was just working. I was just sacrificing. And then through that, all these different tools started coming up. But I would have never found these tools if I didn't put myself in a very uncomfortable place. We all look for toughness. We all want it. But we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment.